Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to create a sequence from an eclipse. So this same technique works for a solar eclipse and it also works for a lunar eclipse. I just got back from Casper, Wyoming where I got to shoot the full solar eclipse. Now this was a life-changing experience. It was incredible. Like it, you just can't imagine it. Like you're sitting there, it's daylight. Although the light looks kind of a little eerie, a little different. And then all of a sudden it's like someone takes a dimmer switch and just goes like that. And just in a few seconds, it just fades into darkness. Then you look up at the sky and you just see the sun up there, um, just black, this black circle with this glow just around it, just blazing. It's an incredible sight. Um, and I'm gonna take you guys behind the scenes on that entire journey in another video. I'm gonna have that edited in the next day or two and I'm gonna put it up, check it out. So until then, let's jump in and look at processing these images right now and creating a sequence from the time lapse of the entire eclipse from the beginning. And if you want to see some of my photos, check them out on Instagram at Photoshop Cafe. So anyway, here's some of the photos that I've taken. Um, I actually took a lot more than this, but I've just kind of isolated them down to these so I can kind of show you the steps without it being overwhelming. So I'm starting in Lightroom. You could start a bridge if you want. And what you're going to do is just essentially find the best photo for each part of the phase, as we can see here, coming into the eclipse and then going out. And once you've picked all the photos, hit Control A to select them all. And then what we're going to do is we're going to right click here and then we're going to choose Edit in Photoshop, but we're going to go down to Open as Layers in Photoshop. All right, so this is what you want to do. So you're just going to click this and then what it's going to do is it's going to go to Photoshop and it's going to load all these into layers. All right, and then once you have everything in here, you're going to notice that we're going to have everything stacked up in layers here. Now, if we click through here, we can see each one of the phases in there. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that are going to make this so easy. All we need to do is click at the top, go to the bottom, and what I've done there is I just held down shift and now it selected all the layers. Now all we're going to do is change the blend mode to lighten. And once we hit lighten, look at that, we can see all of our suns right there. Okay, so one of the things we're going to find is we probably don't have enough space. So I'm just going to zoom out here. All right, so let's crop this and we can actually do it with the crop tool here. Just make sure you hit clear, get rid of any presets. And then just hit the Alt or the Option key and we're going to drag from the middle and we can widen that out. And if you want to make it a little taller, you can also do that. So just hit Enter and what we can do is, yes, we can actually crop our image a lot larger. So we need to put some kind of a background. So we're just going to create a background, make sure it goes on the bottom. So we just click New Layer and then we've got that background. And we want to fill it with black. So we hit the D key that resets the foreground and the background to black and white. Now to fill this with black, which is now the foreground, on Mac, grab the Option key, on Windows, grab the Alt key, and then hit Delete, and now we're going to fill it with black, and we've got all our objects on there. And then what we want to do is we want to kind of organize the left from the right. So the way to do it is to click the top layer, and we can see that's totality. And we're going to make sure that we set that as the center. Well, how do you find the center? Well, it's quite easy. You grab that, hit Control T. See that? That's the background layer. And now we see those little grids. So if we hit Control R for rulers, and then we just click and drag out. And then we click to drag out there. And then just hit the Escape key. What we've done is we've now found the center of the document. Okay, so let's put totality right in the center. And I'm just going to nudge it with my arrow keys. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to hide it, and then we're going to start on the top. Okay, where are we? Okay, we've got an image there. Let me grab the next one. Okay, we're going to put that one on the other side. Let's just kind of find where everything's going. Okay, so those are all on the left side. So I'm going to hit Control G to group them and just double check. Yep, everything on that side is there. So we're going to call this one left. 
And let's grab the ones on the other side, hit Control G, and we're going to call that right. And let's have a look. Okay, yep, all the images on the left and all the images on the right. So what we want to do is just kind of make sure that we've got these organized just in order of, of how they appear to make life a little bit easier. All right, great. So we've got the left and the right. Let's turn on totality. Now, I see a little bit of white around there, so we can fix that. I'm just going to select and hit Control L for levels. And if I just grab the shadow a little bit, see that? Boom. That cleans that up. All right, so what we want to do is we nicely want to arrange these and we want to space them on the edges. So how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So two sixes are 12 and this one makes 13. So we've got 13 spaces we want to set up. Okay, this is the quick and easy way to do it. If we go under the view menu and we go down here and we go to new guide, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new guide layout. So we want 13 columns. And that's set up. And how much space do we want in between them? We've got a gutter right now. It's at 20. Let me drag that out a little bit more. And we want to get it pretty close to the width of one of our suns. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking here. Just kind of messing around that gutter till we get it pretty close. And now we're just going to click OK. So what we've done now is we've created guides that we can use for our totality. So I'm just going to click on here and I'm going to go to the very top and I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go to the bottom. So what we've done is we've just created spaces. Now, if you wanted these to be uh, further apart or closer, you would just change that gutter size. So let's start on the right side and I'm going to click on the very top. And the first one I get is right there. All right, there we go. So make sure on the left hand side, you've got these aligned with the bottom and on the right hand side, make sure that these are aligned at the top. And so the eclipse went from the top left all the way down to the bottom right. So this is we literally seeing there's the moon traveling across. It's in totality. It keeps moving left and down. And so there we go. So the last thing we need to do is just go under the view here and choose to clear guides. And it gets rid of them. Now, if you wanted, you could have added a couple more columns, or you can actually just recrop this to fit now. So let's go down here. Maybe you want to recrop this a little bit because we've got some stuff on the edges. So hit the Alt key or the Option as we pull out, and that'll give us the same amount of space on both ends. Hit Enter to nicely finish this off. And make sure you fill that with black. And there we go, we've created our eclipse sequence. So you can see using these different techniques, it really saves a lot of time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to check out my other video, which might be up now. If not, it'll be up in a day or two of the behind the scenes journey up to Casper, Wyoming to shoot the solar eclipse. We were joined with the Canon team, uh, Russell Brown. We had a good little group of us, about 15 of us had this exciting adventure. So I'd love for you guys to check it out and see how we shot all of this. So anyway, if you like this video and you like these kind of tutorials, which I do at least once a week, hit the subscribe button right now on YouTube. If you are a subscriber, make sure you hit that bell there to get a notification whenever I post a new video. So anyway, if you like this, smash that like button into dust, add a comment, let's get a discussion going, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.